And uh, on the line with us is Dr. Alex McFarland. He is the director of Christian Worldview and Apologetics, uh, Christian Worldview Center in North Greenville University, South Carolina, and a talk show host of the program Exploring the Word. Uh, Alex McFarland, welcome to the program. It's great to be back. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Oh, and you, and you can be tweeted at Alex McFarland, M C F A R L A N D. Um, Alex, in this uh, uh, piece uh, that you wrote, Socialist Demanding Ouster of Razi on uh, Campus Under My National Security, Tolerance and Self Expression Are Hallmarks, uh, you argue that uh, it's time for the Democratic Party and people on, this, on, the, on what you're describing as the left to embrace the center. Do I have that right? Uh, at least the center, yeah. I mean, you know, if we look at um, the speakers that have been squelched uh, or protested against at some of the universities, you know, the progressives uh, like all viewpoints unless it's uh, a non-progressive viewpoint. And whether it's national defense or conservative economics or responsible uh, foreign policy and immigration, um, a lot of young people really don't get to hear both sides of the story. They only hear the, the side from socialism, progressivism, the left. And um, this uh, call for the elimination of the ROTC is just one more example of how um, I would say it's un-American. It's unconstitutional, and it's more more globalism than than American interests being served in in uh, ameliorating what college students can or can't hear, can or can't be exposed to. Going after people who are going after ROTC seems to me like a classic Fox News head fake. Uh, you take a small group of people who are making uh, what is probably on the national stage an unpopular position and turn it into some giant thing like this is the defining characteristic of progressives. It's not. Uh, it's a straw man. And, and I, I'm frankly embarrassed for you that that's your only argument. Uh, you know, I, what I don't get is, is actually what, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, uh, progressives should just shut up and go away and let, let the hard right have their way on campus. But, but your article talked about the center. And what I'm fascinated well, to get right. to I mean, is there, what no is the center. There's no university in America where there is a hard right or even barely the voice of the right being heard. No, not at all. Listen, I know I've been attempted to have been shouted down at universities where I've been invited to give a lecture or do a Q&A. And we're not saying this is the only issue, and it's, it's certainly not a straw man, but it's just another example of how tolerant and self-expression, uh, you know, the progressives pride themselves in being tolerant, but they're not tolerant to voices with which they disagree, i.e., conservatism and Americanism. Well, to the extent that conservatism is bigotry, I share that intolerance, and I think intolerance of bigotry in the United States, which is the major animating um, dimension of the Republican Party and the conservative bigotry. movement right now, is, is patriotic, frankly, Alex. But I would like to ask you about the center. Again, I, I, I go back to you know this, this uh, polling that was done in 2016, uh, the year before last. Uh, uh, this was an interview uh, done by public uh, policy polling and uh, commissioned by the Progressive Change uh, Institute. 79% of Americans want the government to negotiate drug prices. 78% uh, you know, support universal pre-kindergarten. 77% are in favor of changing our trade policy to protect workers and the environment. 74% um, want to end tax loopholes for corporations that ship jobs overseas. 73% want to end gerrymandering. This is all voters, right? Not Republicans, sure. Democrats. Um, these are all progressive positions that people like Stephanie Rule say, oh, those are Ber Bernie positions, and the American people will never go for the far left, for the Bernie left. 71% uh, of Americans want a, an infrastructure jobs program that's at least a half a trillion dollars. 71% of Americans want Medicare for all. 72% think Americans should be able to pay their, their mortgage with their 401k. 70% of Americans want to expand Social Security. 70% of American voters want a Green New Deal. I mean, I could go on. The list goes on. I don't understand where this so-called center is that you're saying that people on the so-called left should be embracing. What it seems to me is that the center is where the Republicans were 30 years ago and, and that it's just old Republican policies of, hey, let's let the corporations buy more politicians. Well, you know, there, there are a lot of statistics and a lot of polling results get, uh, brought to the table by different uh, ideological groups. And let me say volumes of research uh, prove that 
the uh, removal of government intervention is the best thing for the free market and the best thing... There's no such thing as a free market, Alex. Markets are created by governments. Governments regulate the currency. They define the rules of the marketplace. They define what's fraud and what isn't. They, 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 man, they manage and run the jails in which people who break the rules of the market are put. There's literally no such thing as a free market. Even if you say the freest of free markets, I'll, you and I are next sure. door neighbors, I'll wash your car if you mow my lawn. That sounds like the freest market imaginable, but what happens when I accidentally or intentionally smash the window of your car while I'm washing it? Who do we go the to to litigate that? For Outside the free market, we go to government. The There's no such thing as a free market. And your argument for deregulation is simply an argument for the banks and the refineries to be able to poison us and rip us off. You know, Finland just two weeks ago removed the guaranteed standard monthly wage for everybody. That has nothing to do with deregulation. Um, America was at her strongest and thrived and was at her best when the government's intervention in the market was minimal, not maximal. And I'm oh, are you talking about Andrew most, Jackson's administration when we had the greatest depression no, in the I'm history of the United about, States? Uh, I'm talking about the post-World War II era where the government was minimally involved. And we don't want to become a socialist. Right, so the government came uh, in in the 1970s utopia. in response to Ralph Nader and Rachel Carlson and started regulating pesticides, regulating pollution, re and, and uh, you know, regulating seat belts and car helmets or, or motorcycle helmets. Conservatives were screaming bloody murder. And what happened to the economy, Alex? Look, look it at the stock boom. market since Trump was inaugurated. Just look at the stock market and look at the economy. Consumer spending is up. Consumer confidence is up. People are saving money. More people are owning their own homes. Hey, you, know you give me four and a half trillion dollars to pour into the economy, I'll market. show you good times too, the Alex. This is a benefit. scam. The consumer, the only place where socialism is lauded in this, this is a is scam, Alex. They they are borrowing and a trillion and a half dollars this October. They borrowed four hundred thirty-eight billion dollars in the first quarter of this year and, and in order to hand that money off to billionaires to who and, and big corporations like Apple who are buying back a hundred billion dollars worth of their own stock to jack their stock prices. So you can say that how, somehow it has something to do with deregulation. Do it doesn't. Government entitlements. We'll have to end welfare programs. We can't have a state go, and we'll have to, that, that way we won't have to be uh, living in the red. We'll end government entitlements, and the sooner the better. So who, who's, uh, whose welfare programs would Jesus cut off in your world, Dr. Alex McFarland? Uh, well, first of all, in People who don't the work? world of Jesus Christ, there never would have been socialism. There never would have been a Jesus was the original a socialist. system. Everybody uh, put into know, the common purse, Alex. You know the, that. The church, Read Matthew and Luke. Helps people, not the government. Jesus uh, did not create a church. Paul Empire created a church. People. He said, uh, "Give a cup of cold water in my name." So they weren't looking to the Roman Empire to help the needy. It was the church, and I'm very thankful to know of hundreds of churches and to participate in them myself, where we have closed closets. We have so, closed so closets. your answer to my question, Alex, is. Stop all the welfare programs and tell people to just go knock on the door of a church when they're hungry or when they need vaccinations for their kids or when they discover that they have cancer and they don't have health insurance. Is that your answer, really? Absolutely. I'm in Greensboro, North Carolina. If anybody needs a hot meal or a warm coat, call me. You can find me in Greensboro, and we will help you. But the government's job is... Do you want me to publish your telephone number? Because, sure. Um, the government's job yeah, is 877-YES-GOD-1. Uh, the government's job is to deliver the mail. I've got a 704 and number. And otherwise, stay out of our lives. Seriously. Do you want your 704 That's, number published? Uh, sure, because it doesn't work anymore. But the, the office number is 877 so, so, so you didn't mean call me. You meant call, call, your, uh, call your business. Well, and, and <laughs> we will help you. Obviously, I'm not going to give my wife's uh, cell phone number out. Uh, and, well, you uh, just said call me if you're sick, if you're hungry. You know, yeah, I, but, but you know, kind of qualify. Dial 877-YES-GOD-1, or you can go to our website, truefornewgeneration.com. But, Tom, look, the only place socialism has a welcome home is that in the classroom of liberal, secular university dinosaurs and on talk shows like yours. Right. In the real world where people actually have to make a living and pay the bills, it's not socialism. Socialism is absolutely welcome that. here, Alex. You're, you're completely right. Dr. Alex McFarland, uh, he is the... Uh, Excuse me, the director of Christian Worldview and Apologetics with Christian Worldviews.